Hello and welcome back to Numerical Analysis. So I, I know we were coming up on the exam. Uh, we have a couple weeks. I, I'm, uh, for the uh, fall 2020 semester, uh, basically what we're going to have is we're going to have the first exam uh, on the week of October 15th. Um, I, and the reason for that is I think October 15th is the, um, the deadline for midterm grades. Uh, in the class. Now midterm grades don't go on your final GPA, but I'd like you all to have an idea of what your, how your performance is in the class um, at this mid at this midpoint mark. So the objective then is to, uh, to have at least one exam graded and uh, trying to also get the project graded that week. Nor give myself enough time to get the grades in by that Friday. I, I want to have the exam itself on that Tuesday. Um, so let me go ahead and look at that real quick uh, so we can get final numbers on it. Yeah. I'll just put the, the date up here, uh, what that Tuesday is going to be. Um, but in either, either case, um, that's when we're going to have the, uh, the exam. Now the examination, uh, I, Previously, I had slated everything, uh, sort of the first half of the class being, uh, you know, polynomial approximation and then differentiation integration. Uh, and I know we're hitting on the differentiation integration chapter sections right now, but I'm going to move those to after the exam. I think a lot of people have been having some difficulties uh, making an adjustment to a lot of these common notions that come up in numerical analysis, and that's for like finding uh, concrete re remainder formulas using the maximums of derivatives. So. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and go through the, um, uh, you know, some calculus one type concepts uh, of finding extrema, and uh, and so um, so remember if you want to find the extrema of a function, uh, this is actually called I think Fermat's theorem. Uh, it's basically what you need to do is you need to take a derivative and set it equal to zero, and uh, and that's going to give you your extreme points um, on any compact interval or closed interval, uh, you can have uh, maximums at any of the extrema points and also at the uh, the endpoints. Now remember, we're looking for the maximum of the absolute value. So that means that we need to also watch out for the not only the, the highest point of a function, but the most negative point as well, because we're going to flip it up with the absolute values. And so we're going to check all these points. And when we do, that's going to tell us uh, when we have a maximum. So, uh, so I'm just going to run through and do some uh, basic calculus. Uh, we're going to stick to polynomials uh, because that makes it easy, and especially if I have a quadratic polynomial, we know that its maximum is always at the vertex, uh, or possibly at the endpoints, depending on where the vertex lies. And um, and then we can also find it for we can find the um, the maximum of say a cubic polynomial by taking its derivative, and then we get a, cu a quadratic that we need a factor to find the roots, which gives us extrema. Uh, so I'm just going to run through that uh, process for you guys to show you how that works. And we've done a couple of examples using uh, exponentials and other more, you know, intricate functions. But let's just keep it simple this lecture. Uh, in any case, so uh, as a summary, uh, we're chopping out the calculus portion of the first exam. Uh, so I mean, that basically means we're getting rid of numerical differentiation, we're getting rid of numerical integration. There's a lot of concepts in there and I don't need to weigh you down with all that right away. Uh, there's going to be a whole lot more videos uh, talking about uh, the numerical methods themselves uh, and implementing them through MATLAB. And uh, and so it'd be nice to have some time to just focus on that. Uh, and in any case, the uh, function approximation is absolutely key to everything else we're going to do. Uh, you'll notice if you have watched the uh, numerical differentiation and numerical integration chapters, uh, they all rely on these remainder formulas that we got for interpolation. So. Um, that means that if we want to go ahead and really uh, um, do well in those subjects, we should really get down this remainder formula uh, down, uh, for the interpolation and just approximations in general. Um, so uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. And um, then, yeah, uh, I hope this helps you guys. And I hope it's a bit of a relief to uh, remove those other topics from the exam. Um, I want to make this as clean and easy as possible. I'm not trying to be a hard, harsh uh, instructor. Um, I just want you to learn numerical analysis. All right. Uh, so with that, I think I'm going to stop. And uh, and thank you uh, for listening. We'll go and uh, and do the uh, we'll do the whiteboard lecture. 
Okay, so I went ahead and wrote everything down uh, just so that things go a little bit faster. And, uh, and yeah, so these are two uh, remainder formulas that we are caring about. Uh, one is coming from Taylor series, uh, and the other one is from interpolation. Uh, so for the Taylor series, uh, if we have n plus, if we're using the Taylor polynomial degree n, uh, then uh, the error term we're getting uh, depends on the n plus first derivative. And uh, we have this piece here, which is easy enough to compute, uh, and that should have been an n plus one factorial. Uh, but this piece is one that maybe is a little bit more challenging. Uh, so here we're looking at a Taylor polynomial centered at a, and we're considering it over this interval where we have a as the center, we're going to a minus t to a plus t, right? So uh, the point is always going to be at the center, and uh, and then basically the, the the maximum value is determined by this. So that's where this term comes from. Um, but yeah, but this piece here is what we're concerned with computing right now. And, uh, and the same sort of term shows up here, and they both come from the mean value theorem. Uh, in, in the case of interpolating polynomials, it comes from uh, Rolle's theorem, but the Rolle's theorem is just a special case of the mean value theorem. Um, we had this extra piece here, and I showed you how to compute it and turn it into some sort of exponential piece, uh, but that's just a constant at the end of the day. Um, so uh, again, this is the term that we're really trying to get a handle on. Okay. So uh, let's take a look at a couple of examples. Uh, so here I have uh, this uh, polynomial, x to the fourth plus 5x squared minus x. And I'm asking uh, you to determine the maximum value of the second derivative on the interval. Uh, so if you remember, uh, what we need to do is we need to first find extrema, uh, which basically means uh, taking derivatives and setting equal zero. And, uh, and then compare with the values at the endpoints. Okay. I uh, and I probably should get more specific here. Let's instead of saying a b, let's say uh, from say zero to two. And we'll say from zero to two. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and try to compute that. Uh, so I'm gonna start with this guy here. So, uh, so we're gonna start with this one, max of C and say, and that should be C, 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 uh, C and zero to two uh, of F, uh, well, just say F prime of C. And, uh, and now we wanna find that. Well, first we need to find F prime, all right? And then, uh, so F prime, of x is going to give us uh, 4x cubed uh, plus 10x minus 1. So we're looking for the maximum here. So that's uh, the maximum of a cubic. Uh, so uh, what we need to do is we need to take a look at the second derivative. So, uh, so we want f double prime of x to be equal to zero and find those x's. Uh, so uh, it was f double prime. Well, f double prime of x is equal to 12 x squared uh, plus 10. Uh, and yeah, that's what we get there. Uh, so if we want this to be equal to zero, uh, then that's going to give me uh, x squared is equal to minus 10 over 12. And uh, so then we see that we're gonna have uh, x is equal to plus or minus i times the square root of 10 over 12. So uh, only imaginary roots. We could have seen that uh, just directly from this. I mean, basically this is x squared scaled up, but then shifted up and so uh, it's not going to have any roots. Okay, so what does that mean? Uh, that means that uh, we're not going to have any local extrema inside of the uh, interval. Uh, so uh, this means no local extrema.
So it comes down to evaluate endpoint, evaluating endpoints. So this is always, f prime is always increasing because f double prime is always positive. And so uh, we can even just say uh, the maximum value is going to be at the right endpoint uh, just because, well, I mean, it's always an increasing function. But even without that knowledge, we see that f prime at zero is going to be negative one and f prime at, uh, well, okay, uh, we still need to check the endpoints because we need to take their absolute values. But I mean, this is going to be a clear winner. So f prime at say two, it's going to be uh, four times eight, that's 16 plus 20 minus one. And so that is what, 35. And so, uh, so the maximum for C in zero to two of f prime of x, or of C, sorry, uh, is equal to 35. Uh, we would also compare with the absolute value of negative one, but 35 is way bigger. Okay, so let's add another page. Uh, page blue and two. There we go. Okay, so uh, now let's take a look at the second one. Uh, so this, uh, the other term. Uh, so uh, again, let's change colors. We had f of x is equal to x to the fourth plus five x squared uh, minus x. And uh, and so now we can go ahead and ask uh, that what we were trying to find here is uh, we want to find the maximum of the absolute value of f, the second derivative. So I just put f double prime of x. I uh, want of c, sorry, c and say zero to two. All right? What is that? Well, uh, I can go ahead and take the. Um, so I can go ahead here and take. Uh, the second derivative, and we already figured out what that was. The second derivative was 12x squared plus 10. So f double prime of x is equal to uh, 12x squared plus 10. And I uh, want to find the maximum of this. Now, one thing we could do is we can take the third derivative, and once we take the third derivative, we can set it equal to zero. And then having set the third derivative equal to zero, uh, we find the extreme of points, and then we compare the values of f double prime at the extreme points, and then also at the end points. But there's an easier way for this particular problem to find the extrema. And the extrema for this uh, is, uh, comes from the vertex. Uh, so um, basically, this is just a quadratic. And so we can just use our, say, Algebra 2 knowledge here. And we know here the vertex is at 0, because the vertex is uh, where you're going to have your local extrema. Uh, so vertex is a negative b over 2a, but a is, uh, but b is 0. So our vertex is at 0, and we see that f double prime at 0 is equal to 10. And so that is one point to check. Now we need to check the uh, check. Uh, so we, this is technically at zero, but we also want to check at two. And so um, f double prime at two, uh, what is that going to be? Well, it's going to be 12 times four, and so that's 48 plus 10, that's 58. And so here we see that the maximum of for c in say zero to two of f uh, double prime of c should be equal to 58. And so uh, that's the answer for that one. Uh, now let's take a look over here. Uh, if I take a look at this polynomial and we want to find the maximum of one, let's just say first derivative, um, over a, b, uh, but let's get more specific. It's a new problem, so let's choose new bounds. Uh, let's say two to five. Uh, that's that's gonna be horrible numbers. Uh, let's just say a negative one to one. There we go. Uh, so uh, I wanna find the maximum of this. And so here I'm gonna go ahead and take f prime of this guy, which gives me x to the fourth plus two x squared plus one. And now we wanna find the max of this.
All right? Again, what I can do is I can take a second derivative, set it equal to zero, and then solve for that one. If you do that, uh, it's not too hard to see. Uh, you see, you get f double prime of x is equal to 4x cubed uh, plus uh, 4x, and that's going to give us 4x times x squared plus 1. And, uh, and again, uh, if this is equal to 0, we get x is equal to 0, or x is equal to plus or minus i. So i, uh, that means that our extreme point is again going to be at 0. We could have seen this also uh, if we set, uh, uh, if we just took it, you know, this is a quadratic in x squared, and so we could actually turn that into a, uh, um, a quadratic polynomial question. Uh, but this is easy enough to do. Okay, so, uh, so that means I need to check f prime at zero, which is going to give me one. I need to check f prime at, well, plus or minus i, it doesn't really count. And so then we need to check f prime at negative one because it's an extreme of point. And so that's going to be, uh, let's see, this guy evaluated at one. So that's going to be one plus two plus one, that's four. And uh, that's actually going to be the same as what we get if we put f prime of one. So we see then that the maximum of f prime of c over for c and say negative one to one uh, is equal to four. And there we go. Uh, so uh, this is uh, definitely a sort of problem that you're going to see on the exam. Um, I want you to be able to take maximums and of say quadratics and polynomials and things like that. Uh, there might be one or two on the exam that involves an exponential. We have other examples for that for those guys. But uh, but yeah, um, I hope this helps. And uh, yeah, and we'll go ahead and jump back to the office. Okay, uh, so I uh, we're done. Uh, that was uh, finding maximums and uh, of you know, functions and, uh, you know, the maximum of the absolute values of functions of higher order derivatives. And, uh, and yeah, that, that allow you to compute these remainder formulas, uh, in a lot of cases. Um, so, uh, a problem like this is definitely going to be on the exam, uh, if that makes you feel any better. Uh, this is, uh, something that's going to be easy to access and should take you like two minutes. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, there's going to be a few gimmies on the exam. There's going to be a couple of problems that are a little bit harder. Um, and that's just how exams go. And, uh, and I hope everybody does well on it. Um, we'll talk about it more uh, as we get closer uh, in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Um, thank you for listening. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you next time.